Hey, Brad, how'd it go today? Hi, Scott. Welcome, everybody. Let's do another uh, mic check. Uh, Scott was breaking up a little bit, and I know that Tim is not able to hear anything. Tim, we do have audio right now, so uh, let me know if you guys can hear me. Go ahead and do a little question panel where you can uh, type some things. So thank you. Thanks, Bryce. All right, guys, so let's, uh, let's get started. Uh, today is April 1st, April Fool's Day. Crazy day in the market, like it's been for the last several weeks, so you got to be careful out there. This is our Wednesday Q&A session, interactive session. I'm going to spend about 30 minutes or so on the product. I'll go through some of the different functionality, some of the newer features that we have, kind of just a general demo. And then if you guys have any questions, if I spurred any questions from what I showed you, or if you have anything uh, that you want to ask, there'll be that opportunity to do that. Uh, I have Barry helping me right now as well with the questions. So if you have something that, that you don't necessarily need uh, for me to demonstrate, demonstrate, then you can just go ahead and fire that question off and, and Barry or Scott will go ahead and answer that. Let's just start off here with the disclaimer. Trade Ideas, we are a software technology company. We are not a registered investment advisor. So any of the stock symbols that I talk about today, please do not construe that as investment advice. I'm going to be showing our technology and why we are the best at what we do. So guys, we've been doing this for about 17 years. Uh, we started off in uh, late 2002, early 2003 with our first customer, and it's really been the same product suite, really. It grew from a window to a platform, and uh, I'll, I'll do my very best in the short time that we have today to, to show you what we, what we do and what we do so excellently. All right, so like I said earlier, you know, the market's incredibly volatile right now. This is last week on last Wednesday's uh, Q&A webinar, and we were just starting to pull ourselves out of just a, a, an incredible market slide that we've had over the previous couple weeks. Uh, this happens to be Carnival Cruise Lines, a little bit of fundamental information going into a, a stock play like this, you know, with the, the world events that are going on and, and how it's impacting the, the cruise lines that are out there. So this was Carnival Cruise Lines, a daily chart, and we were just showing you how something like this, it slid off, it could be a good with your position sizing, and you have to be smart with your stop losses. So this is today. This is the same stock. This is where we were last Wednesday, and this is where we are today. So, you know, it really does take a, a managed hand, a managed approach, whether you're going to be new, uh, to get into the software elements that we've created our interface to being able to execute uh, these ideas that are presented in front of you. We have some new, uh, also a little uh, small exchange. I don't know if any actions in a little bit different way proves that we have a state for that yet, but single stock window, which is an ever news tab and uh, gander at some of the stories that, that may be relevant or not. Um, profile, what's the company do? What sector and subsector and industry groups? And then we have the price, you know, what's winning right now? Who's really, well? but this seems like we're okay right here. And the channel bar is like our remote. And then you as a trader and, a, and an end user of, of trade ideas have the ability to customize these different channels or make up your own entirely and create your own custom channels up at the top. So that's this window, this window set that I have right here happens to be uh, this particular custom channel that I have. Um, but you know, you can just go through these different, these other different channels that we have here. I'll just scroll down. Maybe we'll start off at pre-market. So at the beginning of the day, when you start off, you might be looking at this particular channel here to give you an idea of what stocks may be gapping up what stocks may be gapping down, and it gives you that detail right here. Um, if I only want to trade stocks that are above $5, I could take this particular workspace or this window, and I could modify it accordingly. Um, pretty simple to do. So there's the price point. Someone that knows how to use this, you just need to click on the icon that you see here, and it'll take you right to that uh, particular filter. I could likewise get there by typing in price. I see it's already visible down here. Click on it. It'll take me there. So a, lot, a couple different ways to get to the same place, but I'll just go ahead and change that to five, hit OK. And now I've essentially made this window my own, and I could do other things as well. And it's all sortable. This is a top list window. I mentioned it early. Uh, these are all free floating windows. They can be moved around and then organized into a, a particular layout. But like I said, everything is sortable. If you just double click on one of the columns, everything is customizable from the size and look that you have here. Um, and inside of the software, it's also you can reconfigure the way that it looks, not just the data that's inside, but 
we have a column tab here that allows you to take any one of the filters that we have in the software and add it to your display so that you can see in real time what's the value of that particular filter. So that's our top list window. And then over here on the right, uh, we've got our multi-strategy window. And I mentioned this is the window that allows me to take any number of different alert strategies that are all independent and their own strategy and incorporate them into a single window right here. So if I right click in this window, and again, everything here in our software is right click context sensitive. So if I'm right clicking in a multi-strategy window, it's different than right clicking in a top list or different than right clicking in a chart. So everything is context sensitive. Over here, the strategies, you can see I have four different strategies inside of this one window. So when any one of those uh, strategies triggers, it's gonna go ahead and show and display at the top of the window. These are all chronologically ordered. So any new event is gonna appear here at the top. So it could have been any one of these pre-market highs, pre-market lows, Again, this is our pre-market channel, so this is the kind of interesting information I may want to be looking at um, before the market opens. You know, what stocks are are moving on volume? And the same thing, you can go over here and you can take these up gappers, and this is volume today, you know, post-market right now, but if you were looking at this in the pre-market, you'd see the, the legitimate volume at that time of the day, and then if you were to sort on it, then you would have the stocks that are trading the most uh, and there are so many different ways that you can use the, the technology. I mean, I could completely overwhelm you by adding some different filters, but you can bring in some different volume filters that give you an idea of, well, one of the things that we do great here at Trade Ideas is we create statistical baselines on every stock, on every time frame for price action and for volume. So we know how much a stock moves on average at any point during the day, you know, at the beginning of the day, the middle of the day, the end of the day, and everywhere in between. So when things start that are abnormal start to happen, then we can highlight that for you, bring it to the to the window, bring it to your mind, you can then click on it, take a visual look at it, see if it's something that you may be interested in, and then ultimately you're really just one click away from being able to, to make that trade. We've got a trade option here. I've got a few more options because I'm in the dev version, but um, this is what you would see here. And then you as a trader have the ability to configure all of these different options right here so that it meets the type of risk management that you uh, are used to and you want to employ. The nice thing here is when you're using this, I've got, I'm putting this buy out there with the size that I want. And at the same time, I'm putting my stop in there. So the stop's getting placed at the low, but this is all stuff that I've configured um, that's custom to myself. I think by default, it does come with some options for you just like this here. Uh, and I'll show you how you can modify those uh, a little bit later in, in Brokerage Plus. So I'll scroll down. I mean, look, we've got about 25 different channels, probably more than that now, that are all really looking at different things, whether it's a theme, like a, maybe a particular symbol list, maybe it's looking at just tech stocks, or maybe it's just looking at Chinese stocks or something like that or maybe it's just looking at stocks that happen to be doing very well right now or very well this week. And, and this is what we have with our explosive winners channel. So any, the, each one of these windows is focused on a different time frame: today, this week, this year. And then I've got a streaming window that brings it all together uh, in an event-based way. But conversely, if I only wanted to see stocks that maybe weren't doing so good, so this is interesting on a, on a market that's down, on a day that's down, you can see which stocks happen to be bucking the trend. And similarly, on a, on a day where, where stocks are up, you could go to this taking on water channel and have a good idea of what stocks aren't doing so well. Again, on those three different same time frames that I mentioned with the uh, explosive winners, you get the same thing for stocks that happen to be moving down but just giving you a different flavor. And so one of the nice things about all these channels that we've put together, you know, you can customize them, like I said, but, you know, maybe you just want to see how we did it. You know, how, how did we build this biggest losers um, today window? And you can just go into it and you can see what filters we have. So I can click on my filters tab, hide the unused and see exactly what filters, not too many. I'm just looking for stocks that are down at least 2% for the day that have had a little bit of volume and over a dollar, so there's no magic in that. But the magic kind of comes in the sort here, where this is our server side sort tab. So before we bring these symbols into the window, we're gonna go ahead and rank them here on change from the close. Of course, adhering to all the filters. 
and then we're going to populate this grid right here. But so in this window right here, I've got all of my losers, right, for today. These are big losers, 60% down, 20% down. But maybe I want to see their losers, but what stocks maybe trading towards their higher end of the range? So this is my position in day range here, and I just sorted it um, where I have my stocks towards the highest part of the day. This is a, it's kind of a bad example. If you look at this one right here where I'm looking at my biggest losers for the month, uh, symbol MAC has this green position in range. Well, that means it's trading towards its high end of the range today. So if I click on it, and I'll kind of zoom out so you can see today, this is the range for the day, the low, the high, and this is where it closed. So it's giving me that visual indication. And this is doing the same thing, just none of them made it quite that high. But so here you've got stock that, uh, oh, it's not very good at all. So yeah, I mean, it's just a tough day to be out there looking for stuff like this. But in this graphical indicator right here, if I right click in it and I go to properties, I can uncheck this graphical indicator. It's gonna actually give me the value. And the value is important because this is also a filter. So maybe I only want to see stocks that happen to be uh, in the lower 20% of the range. I would get rid of these guys right here, and this is how you would do it. So we'll just come here, we'll go to search, position and range. I'm gonna go ahead and add the filter. So now it's not just a column, but it's a or it's not just a column, but it's a filter. So now I can control based on this filter what symbols will actually populate in here. So if I wanna make, I don't remember what I said, but let's say I wanna make the max position in range 40. But now I hit okay, and now nothing in this window is gonna have a, a position in range greater than 40. And that's just the way the filtering on the software works, whether you're using it in a top list or using it in an alert style window. Barry's Windows is an interesting channel here. Barry is our moderator of our trading room. It's a, uh, you can get there right from our website. You go to our website and right at the top is our trading room. So you go to the trading room and Barry's running this thing about 30 minutes before the market opens to about 30 minutes before it closes. Um, I think that's about the right timing that he uses. Uh, and so the difference that Barry in these windows right here, he's using a curated list. So these are stocks that he's going through at the end of the day and the end of the week, and he's finding stocks that are a watch list per se and, and something that he's interested in in looking at. And so he creates a, a symbol list of those stocks and he just has a it's a pretty loose window here where it's not probably it's not looking at a whole lot of different filters. He's got some position and range here from the previous day. He's got a relative volume, volume today. So nothing crazy here. So it's just a it's a it's a notification window. So when one of those stocks that's in his list is making a new high or a new low and meets the position in previous day's range where it needs to be above yesterday's range, then he's going to get triggered. He's going to he's going to have that notification and that alert. So a different way to use the the software. You can use it looking at the global list of stocks that are out there and use our filtering inside the window, or you can create a symbol list and use filtering or not use filtering to generate ideas off of that. So let's see, Account Builder is a relatively new channel that we put together. This has some lower price stocks that are that are in play, you know? So there's always something in play, and that's the great thing about trade ideas. Even on a, on a market like today, where everything kind of, kind of petered off, there are stocks that are, are bucking that trend, and, and this, is the, this is what you need to be able to find that. So this would have appeared as it was moving up, and you would be able to see that. The, the nice thing here is that this relative volume um, data point that we have is unique to trade ideas, and it's a, it's a really interesting data point. It's essentially looking at the volume of a stock at this moment in time that you're looking at it, and it compares it to, to its normal activity. Like I said, it, it knows all the statistical baselines for everything. So it knows the normal volume of, of this stock right here, DYNT. So you can see the volume subsection down below where we've got our volume uh, subchart here and really pretty negligible volume uh, until today, really, until it's just started waking up right here and the volume kicked in. That was in, indicative 
well, it looks like we moved to this SFET. So let me select it so it won't move and we'll pause the surfing. Um, but this guy right here, all this volume came in, but it indicates it in our relative volume filter. So that relative volume of 185, that's a ratio. So 185 times its normal volume. I mean, a value of two would be significant. This guy right here, APT, had a relative volume. Where did APT go? All right, well, APT. APT right here had a relative volume of 2.55. You know, look at the chart here. The chart's pretty significant. Um, from a volume today perspective compared to the previous days. So even a, even a relative volume of two is pretty significant. And when you get to some of these guys that are, I mean, 42, and I mean, it's just amazing what, what's happening in the market. So we're providing you this heads up display to have all that information. Price alerts, I mentioned that earlier. If I wanna put a price alert on this guy right here, I just need to right click, create a price alert, I can put a note in here. I generally don't put the notes because look, I when it, the alert triggers, I pull it up and I make my decision or my call right there as to what I'm gonna do. And if it's something that I'm not ready for, I may rearm the, the price alert at the same price or, or maybe a different price. But I just usually just save it and it creates that indication here on my chart to let me know that I've got a price alert. I could hover over it, it'll tell me what it is. I have this particular, particular window here sorted on status. So if I expand it, go all the way down. So you're gonna see, these are all of my price alerts, the price alerts that have triggered and the price alerts that are working here. So I have a combination of both. And if I had this window minimized or even closed uh, and one of those price alerts were set, it would, it would appear. All right, so Put enough of the channels. I wanted to, um, well, one more channel because there's something in the channel I want to talk about here. Let's do, let's go to the swing ideas. Yeah, so uh, Shanti, the um, the uh, price alert speaks, does Holly speak to you? On price alerts, does Holly speak to you? That's cute. It's not so much Holly speaking to us. It's um, a synthetic voice, a voice synthesized voice. So. Yes, it does, and here's how it works. If you right click on really any of the windows and you select actions right here. So right now, this price alert window is set up to just do a, a one of the stop sounds. I think it's like a doing, something like that, nothing crazy. But if I go into set up sound right here and I do the text to speech, I think this is what you're talking about, Holly, because that's how we have the AI, AI windows set up. Um, use that text to speech, hit okay. And if you want it to pop up, Actually, this one automatically does. So there you go, and then it'll go ahead and give me that audible signal when it uh, when it triggers. So I wanted to show you here uh, on the swing ideas, this AI enhanced resistance cross. The reason why I'm showing you this is because this highlights the backtesting tool that we have, the, the odds maker. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click. This one is not freshly optimized. I'm gonna upload my optimized strategy when we're done, and I'll share it with you guys, or you can just go to the channel and pick it up later today. Um, but this is what it looks like right now. So I'm gonna right click, essentially any window that has an A on it, you can go ahead and back test it. It's an alert window, and here's that. Oh, so there it was, rec just triggered. Excellent, okay, so uh, over here, let's right click, let's go to back test strategy. We're not gonna trade the first half hour of the day. I'm on the West Coast, California, so we start at 6.30. So I'm not gonna initiate a trade or allow it to initiate a trade until seven. And I'm gonna keep my um, execution tied up for the last two hours of the day. So I'm not gonna initiate any new orders in the last two hours. In this particular strategy, I'm gonna hypothesize that any signal I get, I'm gonna buy it, and I'm gonna hold it until the day after tomorrow to the market close. I'm gonna put in a profit target of a dollar. And I don't know that I would really wanna implement that for a swing strategy, but from the back testing perspective, it works out well. Um, and enable the stop loss here. I'm not gonna lose more than 35 cents plus the wiggle. The wiggle is an algorithm. It's the relative volume times the 
well, it's an algorithm of the, of the relative volume and the volatility of the stock. So if the stock has an average volatility of 15 cents and it's trading two times its relative volume, well, it's gonna be like a 30 cent wiggle there. Um, so we're gonna add that to the stop loss. And none of this really matters. This is um, just the, this is what we're using for the optimization perspective. We're gonna back test this for 30 days and let's just go ahead and simulate the buy. This may take a few moments here to go through. So this is how it comes out. It's not great, it's not bad. As we look at it, we've got a profit factor of 1.72. That's the sum total of all the winning trades over the sum total of all the losing trades. That's a lot of trades, 228 trades in that time period uh, is a lot. That's like a month and a half, 30 trading days. Good ratio here, average winner to loser, 95 cent to 59 cent loser. So that's a good ratio there. And this gives me my return. Um, if I was to put 50,000 in an account here and try to trade each signal uh, $2,500 worth, I would need 100,000 to execute the strategy. So with reasonable margin, you should be able to do that. And then your commission or your slippage will be added here. So this is okay, but this is how you, this is how you would use our backtesting tool to optimize a strategy. I'm going to go through a couple different scenarios here, and then I'll provide the one that I did. I spent like 20 minutes before the webinar doing it. Um, so let's just kind of go through what I did. So the first thing here, I look at this and um, these are all the prices of the stocks that were generated in this strategy between 10 and $100 and we're breaking it down into $10 increments. Let's break it down into $5 increments right here. So now we look between 10 and 15, 15 and 20, 20 and 25. This guy right here has three trades, none of them won. I could drill into them and see what trades were they. I could go back and see, was this something I wanted to look at? Or I could just say, look, this strategy, I don't wanna trade anything under $15. So you can right, right click here on the, the point that you wanna make, set the strategy minimum value price to 15. It sets it for you right here and hit okay. So that's the first one. We just went through and we changed that. Time of day. All right, so we've got 21 trades that took place between 7 and 7.30. I've got 46 trades that took place between, between 10 and 10.30. Let's break this into 15 minute increments and see if that's holding true. Okay, so I, I started off knowing that there were a lot of trades here, more trades than I would like, especially for a swing strategy. So I'm looking to kind of condense it. So I think what I'll do here is I'm gonna not start uh, this particular strategy until 7.45, and I'm gonna stop it at 10 o'clock. So I can do that in a couple ways. I could, I could put in a time filter right now, or when I run it again, I could just say, okay, I'm not gonna trade the first um, 45 minutes, and in this case here, I'm gonna stop it at 10 o'clock. So that's something that I can do. I'll have to remember that when I go ahead and run it again. Um, so now let's go into the other filters. So now every filter that we have in Trade Ideas is present here. A lot of filters, okay. So really quickly, you can go through this with a down arrow and just go through it. Too fast to really ingest anything, but let's kind of go through it slower here. This is giving me the RSI, the one minute RSI broken down into what three points here for each one. And they did it on purpose there because it saw an anomaly here for these first two. Let's just say I'm gonna exclude the guys with RSI under 57. We're already excluding everything under 51, so let's right click, set the minimum to 57. Now guys, this isn't for everybody. I'm, I'm kind of doing, this is for the gearheads that wanna configure their own strategies, but I'm giving you an idea of what we're doing on the back end or what our computers are doing on the back end every day with respect to the AI strategies. It's really using this type of analysis where it goes through all the filters every day and says, should I make a change to the strategy based on the most recent day's activity? So I use the down arrow here to get through to the different areas. A lot of times I'll just scan it first, see if anything really makes sense. So there are a couple here. 
I don't typically like knocking just a single trade off. I think it's a little curve fitty for me, but I like if I see a, a bunch of trades at either end of the spectrum, like this right here, it's really easy for me to knock those off. So here between negative four and six, I think is what I wanna do. So I'm gonna right click here, set the minimum value. I'm gonna need to set the maximum by, by hand. So we're gonna make that six. So I just come over here and type in six and hit okay. So I spent about 15 minutes doing this. This is the strategy that, let me pull it up from my cloud here. AI enhanced resistance cross optimized today. So that's this guy right here. So now let's go ahead and um, back test it and see how it looks. And I could, I forgot to do this when I ran it before, so I don't know if it's the right thing, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway. So I can, I can tell already I have far fewer trades. All right, and so this is the strategy that I came up with. I now have 66 trades out of that strategy. I'm looking for an, a resistance cross here with all these filters. They need to be satisfied before a, a signal is triggered here in this window. Uh, maybe not, it, not everything is gonna trigger every day either. Remember, I'm looking to swing this. And um, so you can see here by the calendar heat map, not every day is taken up by a color, either a winner or a loser. In fact, this went a whole week without trading the particular uh, strategy. So now let's see, our profit factor is 7.14. That's incredible. I mean, that's an incredible one. Our average winner to loser is right where it should be. A two to one ratio is pretty good there. Um, the strategy returns pretty pretty phenomenal. And um, yeah, so that's, that's the, uh, I'll go ahead right now and I'll share it. So let me go ahead and uh, I don't even need to do that there. I'm gonna go to my cloud, highlight it, share and now I have this cloud link I'm going to copy it and I'm going to put it in the chat here for you guys and you can then just copy that link uh, and then come back into your cloud and when you have that link and you go to your cloud it's going to automatically appear right down here at the bottom you can go ahead and hit load so I'm also going to update uh, the swing channel after the webinar so if you don't want to get it now you can always come here later and just go to the swing channel and grab it if you just want to save a single window, you can just save or share to cloud. By default, it's highlighting the uh, the window that you right click on. But if you want to select multiple windows, you want to select the entire layout, have it clear the previous layout when you load it, you can do all that here. So the reason why I showed you this uh, is because I want to show you the, the uh, artificial intelligence. I'm going to pull up the Omni AI channel. We actually have three different uh, artificial intelligence segments. Holly AI was the initial one, and then we built two two additional AIs. Holly 2.0 is very similar to Holly AI presently. It does a full independent optimization run every day, so the strategies are a little different, um, and not every one of the same strategies make the cut for each of them, but we're gonna be turning Holly 2.0 into a, a swing AI here shortly. So it's gonna be looking for longer term plays, Poly AI, the original, and then Neo is a little bit different than the other two because Neo has the same strategies every day. It doesn't have a combine where certain strategies don't make the cut. They all make the cut. They are still optimized and re-optimized every day, but um, it's a pretty interesting uh, segment right there. So this is what happened today. It really was a lackluster day in the AI. Um, the conservative was very moderately profitable. And those are the conservative, those are the shorter term trades. Every one of these strategies was optimized with the time stop. So these would be exiting at that time stop or before based on one of the algorithms. Um, if you were to hold it till the end of the day, that would be what the aggressive profit would dictate. Same with the moderate, but the difference between the moderate is if you were stopped out, it's gonna stop it right there. The aggressive is basically not even looking at the stops and it's gonna, hypothesize that you held that stock till the end of the day and give you what that profitability would be. All right, so in this up at the top, I'm gonna to expand this a little bit because in the Omni AI, there are all these different strategies and not every strategy triggered an event today. Uh, let me just kind of drill into like Holly Neo, for instance.
So you can see here on Holly Neo, there are four different strategies that were presented today, but only two signals occurred from the breakdown short strategy. So they were both, well, they weren't both. That one of them was a winner and one of them was a loser. Um, IMMU was a winner on the short term as well as the holding until the end of the day, whereas um, SKT got stopped out. So let me go ahead and pull that up on the chart here. And you can kind of see visually what happened here. Let me make it a little bigger here for us. So we do, we put on these overlays and these annotations on the chart. You can see where the signal occurred, the sell signal right here, and it was profitable for a little bit. You know, it went down 15 cents and it meandered here for, you know, up until about eight o'clock before it broke back out the other way. And then it, you can see it continued up through the stop. And this is our visual reference for the stop right here. It's also let you know that it was placed at 465. Um, you were, if I was trading this at the time and I was and I wasn't even looking at it, I would have looked at, you know, see this consolidation. And when we broke above this consolidation, I would have considered getting out. But there are other things to, to worry about. What's going on in the market at that time? What was the, the broader market doing? So it's not just independent of a, of a single stock's activity. There are other criteria and analysis that go into it. So when a, when a, a signal is generated, it's going to appear here in the open position. And until it gets closed out, either from a profit save or a stop. But again, if you're trading something aggressively, if the market's breaking out and it's just not looking back and you're on one of those days, I mean, those days always happen. They're just not happening right now. And so when that does happen, you do need to be prepared to, to let things run. And uh, we let you know, based on this little color code um, bar chart here, which one is doing the best. So you can see here that the guys that got stopped out uh, didn't do as well as the, the people that based, held on to those positions through the end of the day. So there was a little bit of rebound, it looks like. But ultimately, the conservative approach worked best today through the AI. This is a little different from an AI scenario. We're not getting the type, the number of signals that, we've, that we used to get. I mean, the market's really different right now with gap gap ups and gaps downs of 500 to 600 points before the market even opens. Uh, you know, the AI hasn't really seen a whole lot of this in, until about two weeks ago. So uh, it's learning and, and trying to ingest this information as we go. All righty, let's see what else we can talk about here. Let's talk a little bit about um, Brokerage Plus. So let me bring in, let me go to the Brokerage Plus channel. And that won't really help unless I bring in my Brokerage Plus window. So if you didn't have Brokerage Plus open, you could just go to the Brokerage Plus channel and it will go ahead and load the Brokerage Plus along with these other ancillary windows here. Uh, when Brokerage Plus is open, you can go ahead and connect to a simulated trading. So in addition to being able to trade live, you have the ability to learn how to use this tool in simulation mode. You're getting live data and this, the nice thing about this, I mean, it's really, it's, it's really only, it's almost priceless from a perspective of teaching you how to size yourself and, and how risk can really get you in trouble. Um, on this particular window here, we give you exposure. So you can see at any given time how much you're, you're weighted into a position. When you get out of a position, you can see the distance from the exit. So if you've closed out of a position and it starts to run away again, then you have the ability to see that and get back in, either from a price alert or even just looking at the, the value here, sorting on it and having that information feed your analysis. Um, Brokerage Plus, you can execute your orders in a variety of different ways. So I'm gonna bring in the order entry panel. Pretty, pretty simple how it works. You know, you could go ahead and, and just put in your shares. If I wanted to do 300, maybe move it around. This is my scroll wheel allows me to set the share quantity or if i just wanted to do something you know odd i could do that as well um, from a price point perspective defaults to market but if you click here you can set one of the prices and then again use your scroll wheel to move it around if i wanted to get in let's say five thousand dollars worth of stuff and not have to worry about calculating the quantity of shares i could just select that and get into it in that regard. So that's the, the order entry panel, but we also have this right click that I mentioned earlier, where I'm presented with these different options right here. I also have the ability 
with these buy and sell buttons on my chart uh, to make it make a trade. Let's say I wanted to buy this if the stock comes up to 1691. Well, I can put that in there, and as I scroll, as I kind of zoom out, you can see that it automatically put that stop in there for me at the low of the day. And the reason why it did that, I have this strategies tab right here, where this is where that list is populated from, and I can get in here and I can configure it. I can do have it do whatever I want. That risk management section right here, I have my stop loss set to a filter, which is the above low filter, which lets me know how many pennies it is to the low of the day. I can get really sophisticated. All my filters are in here. I could even create a custom filter. Don't know if I have any customs in this account right here, but yeah, you can create a custom filter here too to use as your stop loss. Um, I don't want to go off on a tangent here, but um, just to give you a notion, I'm going to change accounts here real quick. And let me just go ahead and just bring up a configure window. And I'm going to go to my filters and I'm going to scroll all the way down. Actually, I'm going to go to my search and I'm going to scroll all the way down. So when I get to this U section right here, these are all filters that I created, that I added to the software. And then you can do the same and you do that through our website. Um, we've got a little document on there. It's like a seven page PDF document that explains how to do it, but it's actually pretty simple. So I've got a ton here. And so I just wanted to just show you that that's something that you could do as well and create that. Got a farm here. Hold on one second. Yeah, we're all quarantined. All right, so in here, um, we have the ability to, like I said, bring these buttons down, set your price, have your stops automatically set. You can also drag these around, right? So you can take this and you could drag it, take this, drag it, visually referenced on the intraday chart as well as on the daily chart right here. <laughs> Thanks, Claudia. All right. Um, so I have made my way through, probably spent a little bit more time than I wanted to on the software. Let me kind of move over to the questions here. And I, I see that Barry has helped me out tremendously. Thank you, Barry. So why is it when I put the brokerage plus, put it on brokerage plus, the back test is different number. Pedro, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't understand your question. So Andres, the AI trades are less now I have less uh, trades coming through right now. Um, on, a, on an active day when we're not gapping so significantly, I'd say we probably have about 10 trades per segment. Uh, that would be maybe not quite as many on NEO. Uh, that usually has less, but, um, but yeah, we do have more. So is what available, Graham, is what available on the free simulated trading? Uh, everybody that has access to trade ideas, whether you're standard or whether you're premium, you have access to simulated trading. We want you guys to use this. We do not want you guys to learn while the fire's hot. I mean, ultimately, you're going to have to get out there and learn while the fire's hot, but you do want to have some understanding of how to use the technology, how to um, size yourself. What type of size is realistic in a market with this type of volatility? Yes, yeah, so the graph trading is available. Yeah, this is available. You, one thing I did want to bring up earlier that I neglected to, please, everybody, go to our website. Go to the download software area. Scroll down. Don't download the production version. I highly recommend downloading the beta. Um, each version that we put out is typically better than the last. So I'm I'm a big fan of this. This is going to have the latest tech with respect to the the single stock window with the similar. We've uh, made some enhancements to that. 
We've also made some enhancements to the news component and its ability to search for news stories. Um, I'm not sure what else we have in that one, there, but it, that's got the buy buttons and the sell buttons as well on there. So um, from that regard, I would, I would definitely recommend it. So um, shed light on level two market data. I will shed as much light as I can on it. We do not provide level two market data. Um, this is all working. Trade ideas and all of its signals are generated off of level one data. Level two data, in my opinion, I used to use level two, um, but in my opinion, it's just not what it used to be. Uh, there's so much masking that goes on in the marketplace, the ability to put discretionary orders, hidden orders, um, algorithms that will repopulate um, your order. I just don't find it to be that valuable, but I mean, to each his own, and I'm not saying don't use it, I'm just saying I don't use it anymore, whereas I, I did used to use it. This is something that typically is provided through your broker. So um, you're not going to be able to, you know, Trade Ideas is not a broker, so you're not going to be writing us a check, you know, for your account and then trading through us. That's not how it works. You're going to be depositing your money with a broker like Interactive Brokers, like E-Trade. Uh, all of those providers have access to level two. So if you want to, um, to use it, you would use it from them. Hardis, um, Mac-based software, not specifically, but I do have a, a web version of the software. Uh, it's about 90% 90 90 of what we have um, with respect to the application. So go to our website here, go to Trade Ideas for the Web. Right now, we're in the process of, we're gonna be building the um, Brokerage Plus component uh, to be adding into this area, and we're gonna be expanding the single stock window, adding some indicators to the charts, but that's really all that it's missing right now. The most recent addition that we put into it were the price alerts, so that's available uh, in the software right now. And, Everything is um, consistent between the two products. You know, you could take a cloud link over here and bring in your layout right over here into the web version. Web version is a little different. Some people like it more from the perspective of our channel window. So the channel window is kind of all contained right here. You do have the ability to pop out windows, have free floating windows, you know, open up an alert window. And, you know, you can set up a, a complete layout here on the web version. So while it's not quite what the application is, it's really sophisticated. So if I'm using um, Brokerage Plus to load IB, would you see our level two data? Well, we don't have level two. So Holly Grail, um, to talk a little bit about the three different segments. Holly Grail is our original um, segment. It has the same strategies as Holly 2.0. So we have about 50 different strategies in each one of these segments. So the same strategies, they do get optimized differently every single day. And because they get optimized differently, the same strategies don't, how can I say it? The same strategies don't output the same statistics and one of the strategies may not have as good a statistics as the other so it won't make the cut the next day but like i said earlier holly 2.0 is going to be transitioned over the next couple months into a swing trading segment so for the users that want to partake in swing trading this would be the segment you would want to look at um, the original holly ai is i, I love it because it, it's our original concept and then the difference is in holly um i'm sorry in Holly Neo, the difference is that there's not a combine. The same uh, six strategies, is it six strategies? I think so. The same four strategies get updated every single day. So a um, little different how they work. You get, you get a little bit more risky trades generated out of Neo, but the potential return is far greater. All right, can I create buy, sell buttons as you have the buttons on your chart so you place an order with the click of a button? Not yet, but we are gonna be augmenting and, and uh, enhancing this. Right now, these buttons are selected by you. You set your configuration up and then you right click on here and you set it as your default chart long strategy. So you can see 
this is the one I have set for my default long, and this is the one I have for my default seller short. So the su success stats are, are they're kind of hard to, to come by because every day is a little different. Some days you want to use conservative mode. Some days you want to use aggressive mode. Um, so from that perspective, there, that, that's why when I, when I say we have automation available for this, and you can automate Holly and you can automate your own strategies, but with respect to automating Holly, it's not just as simple as saying, yeah, let's turn it on because you have to do a few things. Let me show you, for instance, on Holly AI, the, uh, the AI tab on, on uh, Brokerage Plus, these are all the different strategies that are present, but you as a trader have to make certain decisions initially and you can always override those those decisions later on in more of a gray box mode um, but if you want to turn it fully automated this is what you have to do so you first of all have to tell it how do you want to enter into these positions do you want to do it on a conservative mode moderate mode or the best of you know maybe it's the third trade in that segment and uh, conservatives are doing better well then that's the mode it'll go into you then have to decide you know how much are you going to uh, commit to that? Is it going to be based on stop loss, fixed shares, dollars? So how are you going to trade it and what kind of size are you going to do? Then how are you going to get into that position? Are you going to do it in an aggressive fashion like a market order and lose some pennies getting in, but make sure you get in? Or are you going to put yourself with a limit order and run the risk of not necessarily getting every trade, but not paying up too much for it if you get it? And then if you do want to put a limit, what kind of offset do you want to use? Do you want to be maybe pay five cents above the last price or five cents below? You know, you, you have to make those determinations. So that's why you have to decide, are you going to trade both the long and the short? Are you going to um, do the re-entries? So let's say you get stopped out, but the stock starts to ability to, to re-enter that. Do you want it really hard for me to tell you that, yeah, AI is... Um, it performs this type of return. I'd have to give you like eight different returns based on how you're doing it. Um, but the AI has put out some incredible signals. Uh, it's all about risk management and some of the returns and percentage returns on these guys are phenomenal, which, I mean, that really shouldn't be any surprise considering the type of activity we're having in the market right now. But uh, even prior to the, all this volatility, um, some of the signals that it generates are, are phenomenal. So your buy sell buttons, and it probably don't work, maybe because you need to, one, be connected with Brokerage Plus. So if I'm here unconnected and I drag it, it doesn't really know what to do. It doesn't know what strategy. It doesn't really know how to, to do that. So what you would need to do is go to connect. You get that engineering connection signal right here. And then once you do that, you can go ahead and, and put your order out there. So Steve, that's a great question. Um, and I've had, I've had a few people ask that. And I think what you're talking about is called link grouping, to be able to have linking amongst various groups of windows and um, while i don't have that in the immediate plans it's been brought up more and more so it's something i'm more inclined to look into so tom great question can i create a scan that requires two alerts at the same time to notify to generate an auto trade example mm, um, no, I don't, but, but, but I do have a tremendous number of filters that mimic what the alert is doing. Like, let's say you wanted it to be um, crossing above the VWAP and making a new high, something like that. Well, if you go into something like the alert window here, while well, you can go ahead and you can select multiple alerts, it's basically saying it can be a new high or it can be a new low or it can be a new high filtered or a crossed above resistance, different than the filters which use an and type of logic. So it needs to be 
above the close and the relative volume needs to be two and the volume today needs to be this. But like that example I just gave you, and there are a ton of them like this, if you go to VWAP, for instance, I could do my um, crossed above VWAP alert, or I could do a, yeah. similarly, if I wanted to do new high, I could do my new high alert, or I could do my position in range. So if I did my position in range, and I said my position in range needed to be 100, well, that's like it's a new high. So there are a tremendous number of filters that mimic what the criteria of the alert is. I hope that helps explain it. Do I have shared layouts that users post? No, I don't really have um, an area where you can grab that. We do have a forum, uh, forums.tradeideas.com, but we also have the Trade Navigate too that has a bunch of different to download. I don't have any, I mean, I, yeah, actually I do. I mean, what's a rating um, for the best layouts? I, everybody has their own. We do have a rating where we have in our channels, the top channels would be our AI channels and Barry's windows. So take that for what it's worth. Um, really good stuff comes through Barry's windows. Cause like I said, he does a, a, a great job of curating that. Um, earnings, pre-market, the surge channel that ranks highest up there, along with the AI. So it is, Graham, it is, um, because remember, what we do great is keep those statistical baselines of what's normal options volume. So we keep track of normal options volume, and when option volume starts to get out of whack, well, that would be this filter right here, this options volume today. So this this window right here is just identifying stocks that have tremendous options volume compared to normal. So while we don't look at individual expirations and all the different contracts, we do uh, look at the root equity symbol and give you an idea of what's trading more than normal. All right, guys, we are at the three o'clock hour of my time. So we're an hour into it. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. I'm going to bring back the PowerPoint or the Google deck slide deck and let's continue. Barry's trading room. I showed you how to get there. Go to our homepage, click on trading room. You'll need to sign up one time. And uh, once you do that, you should be good to go and entering into it. Screen share audio. It's all there. Daily support sessions, uh, you can reach those at trade-ideas.com forward slash live. A lot of great uh, feedback coming from uh, the guys that are uh, participating and engaging in that. Uh, we are a, a software subscription service. This We're breaking down our rate by the day here, both for our standard and our premium. Just to reiterate, the premium uh, gives you the AI signals. It also allows you to do the back testing. Um, everybody, standard included, gets access to the Brokerage Plus simulation, as well as Brokerage Plus uh, if you're using it through uh, interactive brokers. If you want to automate your strategies in Brokerage Plus, um, you do need to have a premium account. We do a podcast every Friday. I think they're still doing these on a regular schedule. So you can usually hear Dan, the CEO, as well as Jamie, our Director of Education kind of taking a non-standard approach to communicating what we do and what's happening out there. We're always putting out some eBooks. This is our most recent one that's revolved around earnings, trade-ideas.com forward slash earnings. Go ahead and take a look at that. We can be reached on social media, Twitter, at Trade Ideas, at QuantBot, at Today Trader. Those are our forward-facing accounts. And we are also on Facebook, you can reach us by phone, but the preferred way is via email. Guys, I hope it was informative. Hope you have a great day. Scott, did I miss anything? I think you got everything. So we'll have that recording up uh, some point in a couple of hours, and you'll get an email reminder tonight. I'm, I'm sorry, the email reminder goes out tomorrow from GoToWebinar with a link to the playlist, and it'll be the newest video on that playlist. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.